uh, 1920s, um, some locals in Zimbabwe found a or killed an animal, skinned it, and on looking at the skin, realized that this was something they had not seen before. It was a predator, it's a cat, but the skin, the markings were very different. So they took the skin to a retired British major and asked him what he thought. There were a lot of theories about what it could have been, a uh, cross between a leopard and a cheetah and etc etc and obviously none of those could happen. And then they decided that this was definitely a cheetah from the measurements and they named it a synonyx rex, rex meaning king. What cheetah is known, its scientific name is a synonyx jubatus. So a synonyx rex was the king cheetah's name and this was an animal which was either extinct or on the brink of extinction. Never really saw them out in the wild. There was an occasional sighting. I think the last one was in 1974. They saw a king cheetah in the wild and thought, okay, well, this is like absolutely the last one. In 1981, while Anne was still working in conjunction with the, zoo, the National Zoological Gardens, they came to Anne and they said, your breeding project has been so successful. Please don't breed any cheetahs this year because we've got nowhere to place them. So that year she thought, okay, great. We can do maintenance on the fences, whatever. Now, I'm going to give away some of your story, Sam. That's fine. <laughs> Anne had worked out that, that the breeding, for the breeding to take place, it needed to be as close as possible to nature. So she developed an area on the farm called Lover's Lane. 16 large camps, one hectare camps, eight on either side of a lane coming down the middle. And this was known as Lover's Lane, one female per camp because females want to be on their own. And the boys were put into a section of the farm called the monastery. <laughs> that particular year, there were two ladies on the farm, two cheetah ladies on the farm that decided if the boys were not going to be brought to them and paraded up and down the lane, they were going to go looking for the boys. They made their way, they climbed out of their camp, they made their way to the monastery where they climbed into a camp with a rather aging, lethargic cheetah called Frick. Frick de Brie, after the rugby player. <laughs> <laughs> and Frick, although Anne had tried to use him in the breeding program, uh, she would bring the males to Lover's Lane, they would walk up and down the lane, the girls would take a look and say, okay, well, that one's not too bad, come up, rub against the fence, roll, and you would know you could put the male in there. Frick just wasn't interested. He would never read the newspaper. Reading the newspaper is checking out the signs that the female, the scents that the females left behind, and then yakking and chuckling. Frick was like, I oh, know. No time for the newspaper, just lie down and hope that this whole thing passes. Well, these two girls climbed in with old Frick, and they must have terrorized the old man to the point of him doing his duty, because 95 days later, both girls had a litter of cubs. Each one had, I think, either four or five in their litter. And of the litter, in each litter was one very dark little cheetah. Now, when your cheetah cub is born, it has a mantle, silver stripe down the back, and its bottom ends are very dark. It's got long, dark black ends. So it's, it's difficult to actually see the spots and, and so on. And the, but this particular one looked very dark. And between her and the zoo and Doc, Professor Meltzer, they decided to keep it under wraps for a little bit just to make sure, because they thought there was something cooking here. And a couple of weeks later, they went, okay, this is definitely a king cheetah. And we had final proof that a king cheetah is not a separate species. It is a recessive gene carried by both parents, and then you have your, your opportunity to get a king cheetah. In 1991, we made world history again, where we had two king cheetahs mate, and that gives you a full king litter. Okay. It's not something that we necessarily go out and try to do. It happens. So if it happens, it happens. And that's all to do with the genetics. Because if two cheetahs are related, you can't put them together. 
so if you're coming along you've got a, ma a king male walking down the lane and a king a, a king female in the camp and she shows signs um, that she's willing to accept him and he's unrelated obviously you're going to get the wedding otherwise it will be a normal coat that is unrelated